Marine Corps Colonel George Zamka will be making his second space flight as he commands the STS-130 crew on Endeavour. On his last trip to orbit, Zamka flew as the pilot of STS-120, the mission that installed Node 2 Harmony to the ISS. Air Force Colonel Terry Virts will make his first ride uphill as the pilot of Endeavour. Virts will be responsible for robotic operations with the shuttle and station arms, and he will fly the orbiter as it undocks from station near the end of the mission. Navy Reserve Captain Kay Heyer is Mission Specialist 1. She last flew aboard shuttle on STS-90, the Neurolab flight in 1998. On this mission, Heyer will be the shuttle arm's principal operator and the loadmaster for the mid-deck cargo transfer operation. Mission Specialist 2 is veteran astronaut Dr. Steve Robinson. On this space flight, his fourth, Robinson will serve as the intravehicular officer to choreograph the mission's three spacewalks from inside. He has over 20 hours of spacewalking experience. Dr. Nicholas Patrick, Mission Specialist 3, will be flying on orbit once again after his last flight on STS-116 in 2006. During this mission, Patrick will step outside the hatch as one of the two spacewalkers for three challenging excursions. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and Doctor Bob Benkin is Mission Specialist 4. Benkin flew aboard Endeavour on STS-123 in 2008. Having performed three spacewalks on that mission, Benkin will serve as lead spacewalker during this flight. STS-130, the fifth flight before shuttle is scheduled for retirement, will deliver and install the last two major elements on the U.S. segment of the ISS. We're going to bring uh, Node 3, called Tranquility, up to the space station. Attached to it is the cupola. Once we're up there, we're going to rearrange uh, the space station so that Node 3 becomes the primary resident of all the environmental support systems of the space station and we will also place the cupola on the bottom, the nadir side of Node 3 to provide external views of uh, robotics captures uh, of free-flying vehicles and also should provide some pretty good views of the Earth. Built in Italy, Tranquility weighs over 27,000 pounds. It measures 23 feet long and almost 15 feet in diameter, about the size of a small bus. Tranquility contains six CBMs, common berthing mechanisms or docking ports, including one for the cupola. The node's eight racks will hold some of the station's environmental control and life support systems that were delivered on STS-126. Systems to be relocated into Tranquility include atmosphere revitalization, oxygen generation, water reclamation and recycling, a toilet, the advanced resistive exercise device, and the Colbert treadmill. The cupola, also built in Italy, weighs about 4,000 pounds. It measures 4.7 feet high and 9.7 feet in diameter, about the size of a home entertainment center. As the space station's ultimate observation deck, cupola features six windows around its sides and one on top. It will resemble a circular bay window, a room with an extraordinary view. On orbit, Cupola will allow two ISS crew members at a robotic workstation to operate the station's big arm during spacewalks or during docking operations with incoming Japanese and European cargo vehicles. As we operate today on the International Space Station for the robotic arm, we're using all external camera views. We have no direct window views to operate the arm. We will also leave the station in its final envisioned configuration where the labs are for science and the environmental systems are housed for the most part in the nodes. The space station will become uh, what we have wanted it to be, a, a workplace uh, for science and research with all the environmental systems that we need to sustain uh, humans on board it for a long time. During STS-130, Bankin and Patrick will step outside for three scheduled spacewalks or EVAs. Robinson will serve as their intravehicular officer 
the orbital equivalent of an air traffic controller. During EVA-1, Bankin and Patrick will prepare Node 3 Tranquility for unberthing from Endeavour's payload bay and installation on the port CBM of Unity. Bob Bankin and Nick Patrick are going to have to go out first and unplug Tranquility from the shuttle so that it's ready to move. Um, and then Kay and I will pull it out of the shuttle payload bay. While higher inverts are operating the station's robotic arm to grapple and install Tranquility, Bankin and Patrick will remove a payload platform from Dexter, the special purpose Dexterous manipulator, to prepare for the arrival of a new platform on a future shuttle mission. After Tranquility has been berthed to Unity, Bankin and Patrick return to Tranquility to install avionics jumpers and temporary shell heaters. The complexity comes when you realize that you'll be connecting up or interfacing with 10 different locations that have electrical lines on them and keeping track of the 10 caps that are associated with that and the 10 caps that are on the electrical line that have to go on to those locations as well. And So you start adding up these groups of 10. On flight day 6, the crew will open the hatch to Tranquility and begin outfitting the interior of the new module. We first go inside, it's going to be dark because we don't have the electrical power all hooked up yet to the node number three. So we'll go in uh, with headlamps and portable lights to be able to start working inside of it. Kay and I and also George Zamka and Steve Robinson, several of us have uh, outfitting tasks is what we call them, where we go inside the modules and start connecting the cables and, and plugging the different hoses and so on uh, together to get the modules activated. With assistance from the ISS crew, the Endeavour crew will relocate the station's environmental racks into Tranquility and bring them online and into their final configuration. It's going to take quite a bit of choreography to make sure that we move all these in the correct order and uh, it's kind of like you don't want to paint yourself into a corner. During EVA 2 on flight day 7, Bankin and Patrick will begin making connections and installing equipment on the exterior of Tranquility. The spacewalkers will attach the first two of four external ammonia cooling loops from the U.S. lab Destiny. The ammonia lines help disperse the heat from the station's electronic equipment into space. The remainder of that spacewalk um, will actually encompass further outfitting of the exterior. There are a, a series of handrails and equipment that needs to be installed on the exterior of Node 3 that if it had been installed during launch, it would have potentially interfered with the space shuttle itself. PMA-3 will be relocated on flight day 9 to the forward end of Tranquility, where Cupola initially resided, to provide MMOD protection. Before EVA-3, Higher inverts will operate the station's arm to relocate cupola. We're going to first uh, take the cupola and unberth it using the common berthing mechanism from its uh, launch location, which is on the axial end of the Tranquility module, and then we will move it to the nadir side of the Tranquility module and berth it there. During the third and final EVA, Bankin and Patrick will remove two large sheets of temporary MLI, or multi-layered insulation, from cupola. Then the spacewalkers will install the second pair of ammonia lines, Loop B jumpers, from the U.S. lab Destiny to Tranquility. Patrick will also finish the exterior outfitting of cupola. The aluminum shutters that protect the window panes from orbital debris will be bolted down and I have to remove each of those bolts. There are three bolts on each shield and there are seven windows so that's 21 big bolts that I'll be removing with my pistol grip tool uh, during EVA-3. Endeavour's crew will also outfit the interior of Cupola. They will relocate one of two robotic workstations from the US lab Destiny. At last, Cupola will be the space station's operational room with a view. It's always very inspiring to me uh, to meet uh, people that have devoted their careers. This is the best part of their lives and, and their livelihoods uh, to human spaceflight travel. Something we learn really quickly as an astronaut is just how many people are involved at NASA in making us fly safely. It requires a lot of very smart and talented people, from the people who do the manufacturing to the engineers and managers to make decisions. And uh, it's the people here that make it really a special place to work. So this job wouldn't be half as interesting as it is if you only ever saw the hardware and you never met the people and heard the stories behind their, uh, their work on the hardware and the stories behind the hardware itself. You realize uh, 
how excited everybody is to see their hardware going to